Perfect. Now, time for the interview. I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Here's one for both of you. What do you think about sports on television? Is it good for business, or will it make it all more... for the masses? More for the masses, for sure. But also more fair. Ever since television came along, there's no place for corrupt athletes or rigged games. In the old days, athletes succumbed to corruption scandals because they didn't make enough money. Because no matter how large a stadium is, space is limited. But thanks to TV and advertising, my generation has put an end to corruption. Now that's a headline. Okay, now... Here's one for Helen. Can you tell us how much Champies pays you to endorse them? Sure, honey. They pay me much more than I'd ask them for. In fact, Champies is so delightfully delicious that I'd even do it for free. Does that answer your question? Uh, no. Nonsense. We both know it does. Moving on. Time for a picture. How should we pose? Show me your weapons. Uh, the fist against the racket. That's it. Perfect. Now what? Okay, Helen. Dating a boxer can be dangerous. Aren't you afraid that those blows to the head will take a toll on his intellectual capacity? Honey, take a look at my man and then look at yourself. You really think I'm with him because of his intellectual capacity? Helen! Write this down. Nothing will change my man. His smarts, manliness, and integrity are all boxing proof. Okay, one more question, and... Oh. Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> I'll be right back, Mr. Pulitzer. Uh, <laughs> Wait. You mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? Uh, yeah. Could you describe him for me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continued to interview Stone, I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. All right, so uh, where were we? In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well. Supposedly, the odds are in my favor, but there is no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so I'll do my best. Your manager is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Cassidy is a great manager, really. No complaints there. And the work he's putting in as president of the association is really valuable. But, I don't know, maybe in this case, Joe Dunn was right. Wait, no. Could you keep that last comment uh, off the record? You know, on the down low. My lips are sealed. Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Well, uh, I wouldn't say I'm jealous, but... I know that someone so popular and honest can draw the wrong kind of attention. There are plenty of people who would love to put an end to our career, so it's not easy. Let's get that picture taken. Turn around and show me those biceps from behind. Like that? That's it. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. 
What's with me today? Don't move, please. Now we got it. Should we keep at it? I'm going to take one more, all right? Let's see what you think about this. Close your eyes and rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Exactly. What's up with me? Stand still. I'll take it again. I can't seem to get it right. Don't move. It's about time. Finally, we're all set. Wait, so are you telling me the photos are developed? Or is that what you said to Stone? <laughs> Both. Just look. That's a decent picture, but it doesn't tell the truth. Huh? Of course it's the truth. I was there. Stone isn't as strong as he looks, and Moore certainly doesn't need him to lift her up. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse, or putting it in? How much do you think each bicep weighs? A lot, but less than your tongue. <laughs> You're hilarious. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. How the hell did you make them pose like that? They're lovers, not sworn enemies. I don't know. I was focused on my detective skills. The boxing thinker, the boxing poet. Boxing just might turn out to be the intellectual sport of choice. I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What was making her nervous? Hmm. I've seen that matchbox before. Wait, that's him. Who? Mitchell, the surgeon. Seriously? <laughs> we got him. Not yet. Right. We still have to find him. Mm. Hey, pal. Did you hear what I just said? We need to keep looking at all those pictures. We need a clue that'll take us to Mitchell. Hey, see? There. Just like I was saying. Brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up, your back and neck feel stiff, your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. No choice.
I see you took me up on my invitation. And you're smart. You knew not to come until my anti-fur regulars had all cleared out. I can't say no to good advice. Or good bourbon. Here's looking at you, Mr... Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, the Iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy. But his joint was used as a gambling drop-off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it? Or was it too dangerous not to? Farnham. Howard M. Farnham II. That's right. Howard Farnham from Ding Dong Tech. You're natural. You're even better at pool than poker. Ah, uh, this here's much easier. No cheating. <laughs> you barely flinched when Cassidy decided to teach that ego a lesson. What do you want a fella to say? Between you and me, partner, this ain't my first showdown. We all got our own lethal barber. <laughs> Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? I can't say it's clear to me. Damn it. Well, nobody's perfect. Well, you see, Desmond O'Leary is my enemy. If you know a thing or two about him, I can leave it at that. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. So, what about me? What do you want from me? No one comes to La Iguana just to drink and play pool. I'm here looking for a regular of yours. Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? I know he's got his own sport business, and I think a partnership would be profitable for the both of us. Sure. Tell you what, I'll talk to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him or else. Or else what? You'd be losing your chance to make a pretty penny. I know how to reward my allies. You think I'd spend my time in this dump if all I cared about was the money? Please, cut the crap. Anything else? I don't think Cassidy would be too happy about the role this here dump plays in old Leary's gambling operation. You follow me? Son of a bitch. Ha ha ha. All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're gonna call him right now, and you're gonna give him this message. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, on surveillance duty, The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive, and that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him.
He went in without it. I wonder what's in it. We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs>